Hey guys, Martin here. Today I want to talk about something pretty negative. It's a business related and basically Vivendi, the company that owns 61% of Blizzard Entertainment and Activision um, is now forcing Blizzard to like give them basically all the cash that they currently have. Now, what's the background story of that? Um, Vivendi is a multinational um, telecommunication company to do many stuff, um, but they are really like um, having a lot of debt right now. Right now they have 17 billion US dollar debt, um, which is money that they owe to um, people, banks and so on. And this is like really a lot of money. Now if you've seen Regful's video, how much 1 billion is worth, imagine 17 billion debt. And what Vivendi is doing now is um, they want to influence or take advantage of their control over Blizzard Activision and take all the money that Blizzard Activision has right now. Now Blizzard has like 4 billion US dollar right now, but only like half of that is in the US and half of that is like in the rest of the world, like in Europe, in Asia and that kind of stuff. And the problem is if Blizzard um, would like take those that money from Europe and Asia and so on and get it or transfer it to the US, um, they would have to pay like 50% taxes on it. So that's nothing they can do. So the only chance now Blizzard has um, or Activision, the only chance they have right now is um, to take on debt themselves um, in addition to like paying all the cash that they have in the US right now just to pay that one dividend that Vivendi is asking for. And this is a pretty bad event because Blizzard needs that money to like invest into new um, acquisitions and that kind of stuff. And yeah, I mean sure like sometimes Activision and um, to, like together with EA Activision is often considered as like the devil of the video games industry the evil and stuff with like many innovative methods to make money and Call of Duty like always releases and stuff but that doesn't make it any less sad that an even bigger force an even bigger bully by the name of Vivendi is taking advantage of like Blizzard Activision, who has been a successful company, like they have been making profit all the years without taking on any debt. Um, and like Vivendi is now like trying to cover their own mistakes, like their own losses with money from Blizzard. And this is, as I said, is really sad, um, but there's nothing that can be done about it now because um, Activision Blizzard was like acquired five years ago um, in 2006 by Vivendi. And back then, like there was a board of directors, basically the people that can influence decisions of 11 members and six of those members are from Vivendi. So this means like if there's any matter to be discussed, those six members like Vivendi is the majority and they can decide anything. But back then, like because Blizzard was such a successful company and Activision, they enforced the rule that for five years, um, they have like two people from their themselves in there, like from Blizzard and Activision in the board. And they have a special veto right, which means they can say no to anything that Vivendi wants to do, even if Vivendi has the majority. Um, but the problem is like in July 2013, in this month we're in right now, that five years passed and Vivendi is now able to do everything they want. And the first thing they're going to do, of course, is to take the cash from Blizzard. Now for Vivendi, this is very good because they have two big advantages. The first advantage is they are able to like pay for their own debt with like Blizzard's money. So they reduced their 17 billion debt to um, 13 billion and even lower with some other things they're doing unrelated to um, the games in gaming industry. And the second advantage is Blizzard has saved that money for a purpose. Blizzard Activision have saved this money so that one, at one point they're going to be able to like buy themselves out of Vivendi. Like they weren't happy, satisfied with that. Bobby Kotick like wanted to buy Activision Blizzard back out of Vivendi. But if they have to pay like all the cash that they have now to Vivendi, they don't have any money to do that anymore. So that's another problem right now. Vivendi actually tried to sell Blizzard Activision um, some time ago, but um, no one was interested. Like people or like big companies don't really see World of Warcraft and that as like very fast growing markets. And that's a problem in my opinion. Now here you can see like this was one year ago like Blizzard was laying off 600 staff globally mostly like community management stuff but um, like they fired 600 people and for the company like what this what this change like this high dividend they have to pay now is gonna affect I really don't know and 
I mean, Blizzard is like trying. They are trying with like they confirmed the World of Warcraft microtransactions in addition to like things they already have. Like for example, I heard that now transmogrifying a helm or something, a headpiece costs 15 bucks or something, which is like more than a monthly sub fee. But um, it seems like they're doing everything now to make um, everything profitable again. But I really don't know where this is gonna lead to. Um, I've seen a pretty good post here on Runic Games Forum, um, which is basically made by some of the developers of the original Diablo 1 and 2. And what um, user Nerf Toy or Nerf Fight Toy was saying, um, back in 2003, Max Schiefer, Eric Schiefer and David Brevik, the three big names behind Diablo, walked away from Blizzard North with Bill Roper and so on. And basically, the reason for this was Vivendi was of the opinion the future was World of Warcraft and not Diablo. Because Diablo was also playing as MMO and Vivendi really wanted to go all out on World of Warcraft instead of Diablo. And consequently Blizzard North, which had been working on two new titles, one of them being Diablo 3, one of them, I don't know, being something else that we will never know, um, yeah, departed or petitioned and anything they've done on the unnamed Diablo project was scratched. And yeah. In the year 2013, now Vivendi is having that high debt, and what he also says in one of the next um, posts is um, this here. Um, Diablo 3 was doomed the moment the geniuses at Vivendi and Blizzard thought they understood the IP better than Max Chief and Co. So, I don't know, it seems really that there are some um, faults in like business decisions. Um, also, some people consider like or say about Diablo 3 that Diablo 3 was successful like in short term because it sold 10 million copies. So this is like a lot of money that they made in the short term. But in long term the game failed because it lost such a big uh, portion of the player base um, that it can't really be profitable anymore. Even if a real merchant house because let's assume if Diablo 3 player base gets down to 5 players the real merchant house won't really make any profit anymore. And those are things to consider. I really hope that Blizzard is gonna stay a successful company they are gonna be able to like get back on track again get those good games out games that sell a lot um, make the money so they can survive as a company but they probably have to work on them like they have to work on the projects um, and really get to the old blizzard back the, the old blizzard that worked on diablo 1 diablo 2 world of warcraft classic burning crusade and those kind of games the last thing here I'm going to show is the BCG metrics. This basically um, shows business units or games in our case um, with two axes. Here you can see market share on the X axis, high market share is here on the right side, and market growth on the Y axis, which means on the top um, there are games or industries with high growth. Now, if we take a few examples, for example, World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft right now is definitely in the cash cow. They have a very large market share of the MMO market. But it's not really growing. In fact, it's actually like losing subscribers. It's actually losing um, uh, the market is actually becoming smaller for this. So World of Warcraft is now really just a cash cow, which means it's gonna keep to make money. That should be invested into other games and um, new possibilities. Um, then, for example, you have to uh, have games like Question Marks. This is usually like all new games or games where you're not sure yet if it's gonna be a success, if it's gonna be not a success. You could enter here, for example. Wildstar, Elders goes on and all that kind of stuff. Then you have the stars, like stars are, it's not that often. It's like what World of Warcraft used to be, for example, a few years ago when it came out, it was growing and it had really high market share. Like now probably a game that comes really close to it is League of Legends because the mobile market, the mobile industry is still growing a lot and League of Legends out of the mobile market is definitely the biggest game with the highest market share. Now. Dogs um, are usually games that are about to die or to die out. They usually get closed down then. Um, don't really have an example for that right now. Um, but what's also important is like the cycle of this. Usually like a game starts as a question mark. For example, let's take um, Hearthstone. Hearthstone is now a question mark. We don't know how it's going to be. Diablo 3 um, on PlayStation is also a question mark. Um, but if those games like are successful, then they're going to be stars, then they're going to be stars, they're going to make a lot of profit, they're going to be like the flagship games of companies. But after that, like after some time, after a few years, every game usually um, doesn't like grow anymore, no, grow, uh, no game grows for like unlimited time. So then they go back to cash cows where 
like this is exactly the state where the foregraph is in right now. Where the foregraph is now in cash cow, so Blizzard tries to make item shops, everything, transmogrify, cost, just to get, extract as much money from the game while they still can. And ultimately all games eventually gonna end up as dog no matter how good they are. For example, Counter-Strike 1.6 used to be like a very dominant, probably the most popular game for a few years, but now it's really not that popular anymore. There are no tournaments and that kind of stuff. So that was my view on that topic, business related, but still interesting uh, because we are all gamers. We all play Blizzard games and stuff, and it's good to know like what's going on behind the scenes and how things work in, like, in the real world out there on the business side. So thanks for watching. I'll be back.